Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the Motorola Droid Razor. Now, you may be asking yourself, why are we looking at a six-month-old phone? Now, there are two really good reasons, or answers, I should say, to that question. First, the price has been reduced officially to $99.99. It originally debuted six months ago at $300 on two-year contract. Now you can pick it up for a third of that price may not seem like a big difference to many of you, but considering this is only a six-month-old device that was a flagship phone with really high-end specs, it is a pretty good value at this price point. And I can say that not only from a spec perspective, but as an owner, since I have been using this phone since launch. So let me just dive straight into specs, and then I'll talk to you guys about, more importantly, the ice cream sandwich update, since I am running the leak, and it has been performing really well. In fact, I can't find too many reasons as to why the delay is still going on, but I know that Motorola does have, uh, you know, bugs that I'm clearly not aware of. In fact, I think the web top uh, upgrade or update may be one of the reasons that this hasn't been released yet. But speculation aside, again, for $100, you're looking at a 4.3-inch Super AMOLED QHD display, so not HD like most of the top-tier phones out there that are running 720p resolution now but still, in my opinion, right up there with the best of them in terms of uh, quality and, of course, screen size, because all of those new 4.65-inch displays and 4.7-inch displays are including the uh, soft buttons. In other words, you will no longer have capacitive buttons. They will, built, they will be built into that screen. So essentially, you will be, in many cases, losing that extra screen real estate when you need to use any kind of control buttons. Of course, when watching video, you won't. Moving away from the screen, you've got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Texas Instrument chip, a 4000 series, I believe. Still a very competent processor, but really not in the same league as what you'll find uh, with things like the uh, Qualcomm S4 or the Tegra 3, which is obviously quad core, or Samsung's Exynos quad core chip that will be debuting with the Samsung Galaxy S3. Of course, no indication that that'll be coming to Verizon, but just want to give you guys an idea of where this processor stands. So, very capable dual core, but clearly not in line uh, with the newest, the latest and greatest generation of chips, but not far behind either. Really can handle just about everything you throw at it. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, ice cream sandwich eminent. For those of you that have been waiting, the good news is, is that uh, from what I understand, the update to 181, which is the bug fix pre-ice cream sandwich, will officially start rolling out tonight. So that's really good news uh, if that's the case, because that means Ice Cream Sandwich will probably be hitting us really, really soon. Of course, you can download the leak, but no real point. I've been using it for several weeks, and it's just been a pleasure. So I'm really looking forward to what's in store. As far as the rest of the sensors, uh, excuse me, specs, you've got a 1.3 megapixel uh, camera sensor up front for video chatting, video conferencing, really good quality. 8 megapixel sensor on the back with an LED flash, also really good quality in my opinion. Uh, you also have 16 gigs of internal storage. Of course, you can expand that with a micro SD card. Uh, I have a 64 gig SanDisk in there right now. Highly recommend picking up one of those. They range from around $80 to $100 and change. The battery is internalized. You cannot replace it, folks, and it's a little under 1800 mAh. If you don't know what that means, basically you're not going to get through a day. You will need to plug this baby in or have a battery pack on you, but really not such a big deal considering most phone these, phones these days, even if they have replaceable batteries, really don't do much better on battery life than this phone. So uh, no different than carrying an extra battery, a power pack, similar. Obviously, it can't be put in the phone, which is inconvenient. But I think most of you out there who especially do care for the aesthetic and the entire package really won't care. After all, that's why the Droid, um, the Razer Max, was launched with almost twice the capacity battery, but I'm not going to get into that. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, of course, you have that storage expansion. You've got HDMI out, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, you know, pretty much everything that you would expect. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, you know, I think that the phone has been reduced tremendously in price, even though it's only six months old, because obviously so many other versions, I mean, you've got the Razer Max that came out two months afterwards, and now you've got the rumored Razer HD, which will bring together all of the best features of what Motorola has done in previous and now hopes to in future products to the table. And a lot of people feel a little bit burned by that. But in my opinion, it's the nature of the business. Smartphones keep rolling out. Companies have to make money. I'm not personally in love with their uh, roadmap and how quickly, or I should say, how small the windows were in between launches, 
But the fact remains that if the end result is that those who have waited can pick up a device like this for $99.99, I can't really be too upset with Motorola or Verizon in this situation, nor can customers that are brand new to Big Red or are existing and looking to upgrade to what I consider a really high-end phone and will be it's a device that will be able to hang with most of the new uh, competition despite their HD screens higher rated cameras and possibly quad-core processors which to average users really don't equate to much so let's talk about ICS I've given you guys enough about specs pricing all of that good stuff so ice cream sandwich uh, this Super AMOLED, which again, I can't say enough good things about. It does have its flaws like any other device, but they're negligible at best. Everything has just become buttery smooth on this device uh, since ICS rolled out. Again, those capacitive buttons won't be here anymore. As you can see, you've got a microphone pinhole right here. If you're wondering why uh, this phone has a little of a high gloss finish, it's because I do have a skin over it. Uh, best skins ever protection, really just so that when I put it in my pocket with keys, I don't have to worry about anything getting scratched. Of course, I do also carry this in a uh, OtterBox commuter series case. The Defender, a little too bulky for me. But back to the phone. Performance-wise, you can see if I jump into the, the uh, app drawer, really smooth. And that's what we've come to expect from ICS. In fact, I found so few bugs with this, I really am not sure why it hasn't been released. I know I said before, maybe it's web top development that needs to get out of beta. Whatever it is, really like what I'm seeing so far. I'll jump onto Chrome, obviously one of the good... Uh, parts, benefits of being on ICS. Also things like the Time Warner cable app I utilize. You can use that to watch live TV, uh, something that is ICS required. You can set, of course, Chrome to uh, by default, as I hit the wrong thing there, to just, you know, render desktop versions. As you can see, really quick, although it does need to buffer. Keep in mind, Chrome is not flash enabled, uh, but really smooth. Uh, pinch to zoom, I mean everything here just looks great. You know, if you scroll smoothly, it's just perfect. If you try to flick down page though, it does, as you can see, need to buffer a little bit. Let me go ahead and show you guys the stock browser, because after all, that one does have flash, and it is relevant to say the least. Uh, let's go ahead and navigate to CNN. We'll see how quickly it loads. And, you know, looks pretty fast. Everything's in line. This is, of course, the mobile version. Let's go full site. Loading up. This is, of course, over LTE. And there, just finished loading. So, I mean, so far, I really like what I'm seeing. And that's coming from a leak, which it's very rare that I could tell you guys I've installed a leak and I'm impressed with performance, but I am. So I really only expect even better things from obviously the official build of ICS. Let's hope it's not identical to this one. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's always nice to know that other things have happened. And since 181, that update with the bug fix, bug fix is rolling out, and obviously I don't have that on here, I have to imagine that that is to beef up the performance of ICS and, pre uh, and prepare it for things that obviously I'm missing in my experience right now. Uh, otherwise, everything has just worked flawlessly. Uh, you know, Gmail only has gotten better, the, uh, the dialer has only gotten better, contacts, everything. Even messaging here in this Blur ICS is superior. So, really like what I'm seeing. Uh, of course, with the Razer, I have to let you guys know, call quality and the radios are top-notch. So, your data and voice are always going to be some of the best in the business. That's one of the things Motorola is known for, and I give them a lot of credit uh, to just go over the body. You've got your access bay here for the micro SD card slot as well as your micro SIM card. This does take micro SIM cards, unlike uh, some LTE enabled phones. You know, some LTE phones do have traditional SIM cards, uh, like the Bionic. Uh, I'm not going to go through a list. HDMI out, USB port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, your 8, me uh, 8 megapixel camera, which of course can also shoot 1080p video. Really good quality on both. I mean, you're certainly not going to replace a video camera, but some of you may actually re replace your still camera with this. Uh, LED flash, your speakerphone, Kevlar backing. Of course, I do have this covered again. Uh, your power backlight button right there, volume rocker, and that's pretty much it. Really sleek, really light, about four and a half ounces for this phone. Really not much to complain about, folks. I think the only thing that anyone can really find fault with 
is battery life. And again, that's something that plagues all high-end handsets. Clearly, you know, with other phones where you have replaceable batteries, as I mentioned, easier to address, but you're not going to find a better phone right now on Verizon Wireless or with any carrier, in my opinion, than the Droid Razor. Um, but again, I am biased to Verizon. The LTE network here is absolutely amazing. So Razor right now at $100 really just seems like it's a given. But if you guys have any questions or comments, concerns, um, you know, please let me know. I do plan on showing you a video with the um, ice cream sandwich uh, performance, of, of course, when it becomes official, as well as showing you uh, how ICS works with the web top. Unfortunately, the web top mode is still in beta, a little bit buggy, but definitely a major, major improvement over uh, the previous web top versions as it does basically turn the web top uh, environment into just an ICS tablet experience. No more bottleneck from that, uh, you know, the old version of web top. They're basically just letting the phone do what it should do, which is act like a tablet. Of course, no capacitive multi-touch screen since the laptop has a traditional uh, LCD but functionality, speed, all much improved. I'm just waiting to see if an official build comes out before I show that to you guys. Of course, if the official build doesn't launch within the next week or so, I'll probably just give you guys a tour of at least what does work. It's a little wonky right now, sometimes connecting, disconnecting, it bugs out a little bit. But overall, I can just see that Motorola is really opening the floodgates to functionality here. And, and this is really what I love about Android and Motorola's approach in this case is that they want to continue to make the product grow. For all of the people out there who were disappointed the Max came out uh, two months later, I understand where you're coming from and the fact that now an even newer phone is going to replace, in theory, the Max. I understand people being upset with that, but I think they have to understand that this is a business. Motorola is going to continue to launch phones in their roadmap. How aggressively is obviously up to management, but in this case, it does end up boding well for consumers that have sat on the sidelines and waited to get a great deal on what I at least think is a great smartphone. And the experience is only getting better, something you really can't say about any other uh, manufacturer, especially because of the lap dock accessory. In fact, the whole catalog of accessories that Motorola, uh, Motorola has launched, including the Moto Active watches. But that's a, another topic for another day. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, visit back to uh, a six-month-old product that in my opinion, is still as fresh as day one, despite its uh, smaller battery and very thin profile. Uh, great build quality, a great phone. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.